So welcome to the video. Today we're going to take a look at how to do a Kruskal Wallace test on version 29 of SPSS. So we're going to use this test when we have a between participants categorical variable comprised of at least three levels and when we have a continuous or ordinal dependent variable. So this is the non-parametric equivalent of the between participants one-way ANOVA. Uh, so it doesn't make any assumptions about normality like the ANOVA does. And you can do it with ordinal data, which you can't do with ANOVAs because you need to use continuous data. So let's take a look at this example. So we're going to imagine that we're looking at levels of appetites across different times of day. So this column here represents appetite scores. So let's imagine that people have filled out some sort of survey and have provided a score out of 10 about how much appetite they have. And in this column, we have, we have a set of ones, a set of twos, and a set of threes. So let's imagine that one, two, and three correspond to morning, afternoon, and evening. So let's take a look at how to enter these data into SPSS. So firstly, I'm gonna go down to the variable button at the bottom of the screen. And then I'm going to enter the name of the independent variable into the top cell in this name column. So let's call this something like time. And then in the cell below, I'm going to give a name to the dependent variable. So let's call this appetites. Next, I'm going to use this measures column to specify that time is a nominal variable, which is just another name for a categorical variable. And I'm going to use this measure column to specify that appetites is a scale variable, but as I mentioned before, you can use this test with ordinal data. Lastly, I'm gonna to go to this values column and then click on the cell that corresponds to my independent variable. Then I'll click on this box that appears, and then we're gonna tell SPSS uh, what the different levels of the independent variable are. So I'll click this plus button, and then I'll type a one here, and then we'll go to the label bits, and we'll type morning and then we'll click plus again, and then type two, and then type afternoon next to two, and then plus again, and then three, and then evening next to three, and then just go to okay. So now if we go to data view, we can see that time and appetite have appeared at the top of those two columns. So now we can just copy and paste the data from our Excel file into SPSS. So I'm gonna just select all of these data and then press Command C or Control C. Then I'll select the top left cell in this column and then press Command or Control V to paste those data in. So we can see that morning, afternoon, and evening appear in this column, whereas in Excel, we just had one, two, and three. And that's because we've told SPSS a moment ago that one represents the morning, two represents the afternoon, and three represents the evening. And it's also because in this view menu, we have value labels selected. If we unselect that, we just see one, two, and three there instead. So to run this analysis, we can go to Analyze, then down to Non-Parametric Tests, then across to Legacy Dialogues, then across to K-Independent Samples, and then you transfer your independent variable to the grouping variable box, and your dependent variable to the test variable list. Um, then you can click on your independent variable and then on define range. And now you're just gonna use the lowest number that you use to represent one of the levels of the independent variable. So I'm gonna click one here, and then you use the highest number that you use to represent one of the levels of your independent variable. So three, because we used one, two, and three to represent those different levels. So once you've done that, you can go to continue and then to okay. And we can see here that um, if we look at this test statistics table and at the asymp sig row, we get a p-value here of less than 0 0.001 uh, because this is obviously less than 0 0.05. We've got a significant effect of time of day on appetite. Something that SPSS doesn't provide us with is median values as part of this process that we've just completed, but it's useful to have them uh, for your results section. So let's generate those as well. So we'll go to analyze, down to compare means and proportions, then across to means. And then we'll transfer our independent variable to the independent list, our dependent variable to the dependent list. And we'll go to options and we'll move all of these things to the left using this arrow, but we will transfer median over to the right using the arrow. 
and then continue and then OK. And now we can see that we have medians generated for each of those time points. So we can see that appetite was lowest in the morning, a bit higher in the afternoon, and then a bit higher in the evening. So one thing that the Crisco Wallace test tells us is that there's a significant effect of time of day on appetite, but it doesn't tell us whether the morning differs from the afternoon, whether the morning differs from the evening, or whether the afternoon differs from the evening. So we actually have to perform follow-up tests to investigate that. So one option for doing that is to run man whitney u tests, which are the non-parametric equivalent of paired t-tests. So to run these, we go to Analyze, down to Non-Parametric Tests, across to Legacy Dialogues, then across to Two Independent Samples. And we're going to transfer Time, which is our independent variable, to the Grouping Variable box and appetites to the test variable list. We can see that man with EU is already selected down here. Then if we click on the independent variable and then on define groups, we need to enter one of the numbers that we used to represent the three levels of the independent variable previously. So we used one, two, and three to represent morning, afternoon, and evening previously. So let's run a test that compares the morning with the afternoon. So we'll enter one and two, then we'll go to continue, and then we'll go to OK. So that's going to do a test that compares the morning and the afternoon. And then we just need to repeat that for the other combinations. So analyze non-parametric tests, legacy dialogues, two independent samples. This is set up from before, so no need to transfer the variables across this time. Just click on this one again, then define groups. And let's change the one Let's change actually the 2 to a 3, so now we're going to compare the morning to the evening, then continue, then OK. And then the last combination is the afternoon and evening, so we're just going to do this one more time. Analyze non-parametric tests, legacy dialogues, two independent samples, click on this grouping variable, define groups, and then change this 2 to, change that 1 to a 2. So now we're looking at the afternoon versus the evening then continue, then OK. So if we take a look at these results, we can see that in comparing the morning and the afternoon, we have a significant difference. So this value here in the asymp sig 2 two-tailed row of the test statistics table is below 0 0.005. So we have a significant difference between the morning and the afternoon. Uh, same thing for the morning and the evening. This value here is below 0 0.05. So there's a significant difference there too. And lastly, we have a value here of 0 0.038. So again, it's below 0 0.05. So we have a significant difference between the afternoon and the evening. So that's essentially how you run the test. But let's take a look at how to report the results of the cross skull wallace test, as well as the results of the follow-up man Winnie u tests. So we've started off by saying a cross skull wallace test revealed a statistically significant difference in appetite scores across the three times of day. And then we've entered some statistics here. So let's take a look at where those statistics come from. So we started off with a chi-squared value. So chi-squared equals 27.95. So if we go back to the top of this output file, we can see that this uh, Chris Girl Wallace H value is 27.95 in this test statistics table. So that's what we have here. Uh, we've also got a degrees of freedom value, so that's here. And we've got the n number, so that's the total number of participants. We have 20 participants in each of the three conditions, so we have 60 participants in total, and you can see that value here in the n column of the ranks table. So that's this value that we have here. And then finally, for the cross skull wallace test, we have a p-value of less than 0.001. And that's that value that we see here in the test statistics table in the ASIM SIG row. We have this value here, less than 0 0.001. So that's the results that the cross scale wallace test uh, reported. And now let's take a look at how to report the results of the, follow the follow-up man Whitney u tests. So we've said follow-up man Whitney u tests revealed that appetite scores were significantly lower in the morning compared to the afternoon with a large effect size, that appetite scores were significantly lower in the morning compared to the evening, and that appetite scores were significantly lower in the afternoon compared to the evening. So I've inserted means and n numbers throughout. So the n number is always the same uh, because we had 20 participants in each of the uh, three conditions. 
but of course the median is going to change. So as we briefly looked at before, we calculated medians. So we can see morning equals four. That's why I have median equals four here. Median equals six for the afternoon and median equals seven for the evening. And all of those values just come from this small table here. I've also said um, each time I've made a comparison, I've reported a U value, a Z value and a P value. So those come from the individual man waiting U test that we performed. So this first comparison um, refers to the appetite scores being significantly lower in the morning compared to the afternoon. So we just need to find the table that corresponds to those two levels of the independent variable. So we have morning and afternoon in this table. And we can see man Whitney U equals 57.00. And that's what we have here. And then we've got the Z score. Z equals minus 3.94. So we're looking at the same table, but just at this Z row here. And this value here has been rounded to two decimal places. So 3.939 has become 3.94. And we've got this p-value is less than 0 0.001, which is this value in this row here. And essentially that's what I've done for the, the next two comparisons. So we've got morning and evening here, and we've got uh, afternoon and evening here. So the last thing we're gonna look at is these effect sizes that I've referred to in this paragraph. So I've actually um, reported some values here that SPSS doesn't provide us with. So I've said that there's a large effect size with respect to the difference between the morning appetite scores and the afternoon appetite scores. And to calculate this R value, we need to divide our Z value, I've made a note of this below, by the square root of the number of participants within the man win u test. So we had 40 participants in each of our man win u tests because we have three conditions, each with 20 participants. So um, for this first comparison that I'm referring to, we have a Z value of 3.94, and we're dividing that by the square root of 40, which gives us 0.62, which is this R value that I've reported here. So probably the easiest way to calculate this is to go to Google. So I've just copied and pasted this formula into Google. So here's the Z value, and here's the number of participants involved in that man win u test. So if we just press enter, Google's gonna provide us with this value. So 0.62, and that's what we have here. So then I've just done the same thing for each of the comparisons made. So I have an R value here, an R value here, and an R value here. And each time I've used a word like large or moderate to describe the size of the effect. And that's based on some criteria described by Cohen in 1988. He said that an R value above 0.1 can be described as small, an R value above 0.3 can be described as moderate, and an R value above 0.5 can be described as large. So that's how I've chosen to describe these R values, either as large, moderate, or small, although in this case, there are none that are actually small. So that's basically it uh, for the results. Uh, let's also take a look at how to create a graph to represent these results. So we go up to graphs and then down to chart builder. This comes up and we can just ignore that. I'm just gonna check the bar is selected here. Then I'm gonna double click on this simple option here which changes what appears in this little window. And then we can transfer our independent variable to the x-axis and the dependent variable to the y-axis. I also wanna make sure that rather than means, these bars are representing the medians because the median is usually the preferred measure of central tendency when you're performing non-parametric tests. So I'm gonna select median here and then I'll go to okay. And that generates this graph for us. You probably want to edit this a bit before using it in a report. Uh, to do that, just double click on it, and then it opens this chart editor. And then if we double click on the bars, for example, we can change how wide those are. If we go to the bar options tab in this properties window, we can just drag this thing to the left a bit to make those bars a bit smaller. And if we go across to this fill and border tab, we can change the color. So I'm gonna choose this gray color here. Then I'll click apply. And then you can just basically click on any aspect of the figure to edit it. So maybe you wanna make this a bit bigger, these numbers, so if we double click on those, then we can uh, increase the size of them to make them easier to read. And you might wanna use the same font that you are using in your reports. So I'm gonna choose Times New Roman 
and then apply to make that a bit bigger and to use a different font. And anything you want to edit, if you click on it once and then click on it again, you can change what it says. So maybe I'll just make that appetite instead of median appetite. And any changes you make to this graph will be saved automatically. So if you just click this red button when you're ready and those changes are saved in your output file. So that's basically it for the CrossGal Wallace test with the follow-up man Whitney U tests. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I will try to get back to you. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.